Now, if you've been learning HTML and CSS up until now, you may have noticed something when it comes to creating a website that is going to hugely inconvenience you as you start creating this site and create more pages inside the website, which is the fact that if I were to go inside my website here, this is the one we've been building inside my HTML course up until now. So as you can see, it, it just basically looks like this. We have a basic header, we have some content inside the front page here. Uh, but the problem is if I were to go in and actually start creating other pages inside my website, you can actually see that right now I have a contact.html page that I created, and right now it has nothing inside of it. So we need to insert some content in order for this page to actually show something inside my website. So the issue is when I go back inside my HTML page, because we do need to have some content and we do have some content, that repeats itself on all the pages inside our website, which means that I will need to go inside my index page and copy everything from the top, go all the way down below the header inside my website here, because we need to have that inside the contact page. So if we were to go in, paste it in, go back inside my index page, because we do also need to include a footer, right? Because that's the same on all the pages inside our website. So if we were to scroll down until we get to the footer, which is right here, and actually copy the entire footer and paste that in inside at the bottom here, you're now gonna notice a small thing, which is going to be a big thing once you start having a lot of pages inside your website. So of course, in between the header and the footer, we would have some main content here. So we have a main tag, you know, we could just insert some content in here if I wanted to. Uh, but basically, imagine you get to the point where you have 10 pages inside your website and you need to change one thing inside your header or inside your footer. Now, what is going to happen? You're gonna go through, first of all, the front page. You're gonna to go to the top of the front page. Then let's say you want to add another menu item. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna copy paste down my list item and I'm gonna create a portfolio page. So we're gonna say portfolio. Now, this would actually mean that I will need to copy this list item and go inside because I do have a mobile version of my menu and I do also have a desktop version down here. So I'm, I would actually need to copy it in here and I would need to go down to the footer because that also has a menu inside of it. So I would need to go down here, but not just that, I would need to go inside every single page inside my website. So I would save this, go inside my contact page. I would have to go back up to the top, change the headers in here. So I would paste it in, go down, paste it in, go down to the footer and paste it in. So you kind of get the idea here that let's pretend that we have 10 pages inside this website here and I would need to go through every single page inside the website to change one thing. So the solution here is that we actually split apart the documents and take the header, rip it out of all the pages and put it inside a separate file and then we simply link to that file, which means that the same file or the same header is going to be on the top of every single page inside our website. So we only need to change the menu in one place. So the way we can do that is going inside our root folder and I'm going to create a new file. I'm gonna call this one header dot HTML. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna take my header. So I'm gonna to go to the top of my index page. I'm just gonna copy everything from the top of the website all the way down to right below the header. Then I'm gonna delete it, save it, go inside my header.html and paste it in. So what I can do now is I can link this page to the top of every single page inside my website to make sure the content only needs to be changed inside this document in order for it to change on all the pages inside my website. There's a couple of ways you can do this. And I think the first solution that people tend to go to is to try doing this using JavaScript since, you know, using JavaScript, which is the natural language to learn after HTML and CSS, you could actually go in and link to this page from, for example, inside the front page or any other page inside your website. However, even if you were to do this using JavaScript, this won't work unless you have your website inside a server. So now we start talking about something that if you come from my HTML and CSS course, I don't want you to freak out about me mentioning a server because it's actually really easy to set up. It's just kind of to say that no matter what solution you try to go to in order to fix this issue, you will need to have a server. It doesn't matter if it's JavaScript or if it's PHP or whatever language that you're using, you will need to have your website inside a live 
server in order to get this working. And like I said, you don't need to freak out if you don't know anything about servers, it's okay. This is very easy to do, so don't, don't stress it. So what you can do is you can install a local server on your computer that is going to run the website and it's not connected to the internet or anything. It's not gonna give viruses or anything, um, but it's perfectly fine. As long as you download it off the official website, which I will also link in the description, then there's not gonna be anything that's gonna mess up your computer. It's a lot simpler than you might think it is. So what you can do is you can go to Google or you can use the link that I have in the description and you can go and search for XAMPP. So X-A-M-P-P, -P, go inside apachefriends.org, which is the official website. Once you go in here, you're gonna download the version for either Windows, Linux, or Mac, depending on what you're sitting on. So you're gonna download it. And then after downloading it, you're just gonna go ahead and install it. And then I'll show you what to do from there. Do remember where you install it, by the way, cause you will need to, to remember where you place it on your computer. So once you installed it, what you're going to do is you're going to go inside where you have your website. So right now, this is my website. This is the root folder. I have my index page, my header, my contact page, everything. Um, so I'm going to close down my editor because we can't actually move this file unless we have the editor closed. And I'm gonna go back inside the folder that this website is inside of. I'm gonna copy my website and then I'm going to go in where I actually downloaded and installed XAMPP. In my case, I installed it inside my C drive. So as you can see, I have my XAMPP folder right here. So I'm just gonna click it. And inside of here, you're gonna see a bunch of files, but you're not gonna to touch any of them. The only folder you're going to be touching is HT docs. So you're going to go in here. And in your case, you're going to see a bunch of files in here. Just delete everything that's inside this folder because this is just some placeholder stuff to kind of like say, hey, you downloaded XAM, welcome kind of thing. So just delete everything and paste your website in here because this is going to be the folder where your website is going to be in from now on whenever you create any sort of website for anyone, basically. What this entire thing is, is essentially a server. And this folder here is going to be where you have all the different websites that you want to build on this server here. So in my case, you can actually see that I do have some other folders in here. These are other websites that I have been building. So just ignore these. These are not something that you need to have. And just a quick tip here, because you will be using this htdocs folder anytime you create a new website inside your computer. So go ahead and take this folder and dock it over on the side so you have quick access to it. So you can just sort of click it and go in and see all the different websites you have going on right now. So just go ahead and dock it over here in the side so you actually have quick access to it. So you can just click it and then you can see all the different websites you're working on. So with that, we now need to see the website inside the browser. So how do we do that? Do we just go inside our website and just open up our front page inside the browser like we normally would? Oh, okay. Well, we can't do that because that's gonna break everything. The reason this is happening is because right now you need to actually start the server for this to actually work. And you need to actually open your website using the server and not just by dragging and dropping your HTML files into the browser like we just did. So in order to start the server, we need to go back inside our XAMPP folder. So we're just gonna go back inside where we actually installed the software. We're gonna scroll down and at the very bottom, you're gonna see we have a file called XAMPP dash control.exe and this is basically just the server software that is going to start up on your computer so we're going to click it and then you can see we have this little window here now this is the server where you can actually choose to start and stop the server so you actually have it running on your computer so going in here you can see that we right now have one called apache and mysql these are going to be the ones that you need to use in order to actually get php working and interact with databases and that kind of thing so just start these two or go inside the config here and say that anytime you open up this software, then you want to automatically start the Apache and MySQL server over here. So you can do that. So anytime you open this software, it's just gonna start automatically. So once you do that, go ahead and save it. And going in here, you can now see that we have these two servers running. This is all you need to do. That's all the technical stuff that you need to do in order to actually do this. So my suggestion is that you go down and you actually dock this little software at the bottom of your computer because anytime you will need to do something with your website, you need to open this software, you need to have these two servers running, and then you can start doing something to your website. And again, I just want to point out that this software here is only to simulate a server on the internet. So because our website is inside the server here, we can now run programming that is actually going to only work inside a real server. 
essentially. That's that's why we need to have this. There's no other reason for it. And I will show you the exact process whenever you have to open up your website again afterwards, just in case you're a little bit confused about it. So for now, just go ahead and, and not close it, but just go ahead and minimize it. Go inside your website and open it up inside your text editor. Now, once you do this, I do recommend that you go into file, open folder, and just kind of open up the folder with your entire website. So we have it over here so we can actually see all the files on the side. But now in order to actually see your website inside the browser, you will need to go inside the browser and not just, like I said, drag and drop it inside the browser. You will need to go in here and write localhost. And once you do that, click enter. And then you can see we have a couple of folders here and hey, those seem a little bit familiar because those are actually the same folders we have inside our htdocs folder, which means that this is a list of all the websites we have inside this server here. So what I can do is I can click my tutorial website, which is the one that I right now just copy pasted inside this folder here. So once I click it, we now have my website in here. And as you can see, everything doesn't quite look like the way we want it to. And there's of course a very logical reason for this, which is that right now we went inside the website and we actually split apart the header and put it inside a separate file. And because our index page does not have access to the header, we also don't have access to the styling. So, you know, of course we can't grab the styling right now. But again, this is what we're trying to fix here. We're trying to link to the header file from all the other pages inside the website so we can also gain access to the styling, right? Because the styling is inside the header file. So we need to do one more thing in order for this to actually work inside the browser because right now, even though we can see all the content inside our website, we're going to be using PHP code in order to actually link to the header file from all the other pages inside our website. And again, I know some people might get a little bit intimidated by me saying we're going to be programming something, but it's really like one line of code to get this working. So if you feel a little bit uncomfortable with the fact that we're about to do some PHP code, you don't need to because there's nothing for you to really mess up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back inside my HTML file and we need to do one thing in order for PHP to actually work inside this file here because if I were to go in and go to the top of this page, so right now I'm inside my index page, if I were to go at the very top here, I can actually start up my PHP tags. So this is a couple of tags that you need to use in order to write PHP inside of this file. So you just simply create an angle bracket and then you say question mark PHP and then question mark angle bracket and anything in between here is going to be PHP code essentially. And all you need to do is you need to say require underscore once, double quotes, and then all you need to do is link to the file we want to include in here. So we're going to link to our header dot HTML. And then of course, a semicolon at the end here, just to end off that line of code. This is all you need to have. However, as you can see right now, this is not going to work because it's white. There's no like syntax coloring or anything of this code here, which we usually do get when we write code. And the reason for that is that PHP only works inside PHP files. Right now, as you can see, all the pages inside this website here when it comes to the HTML files are right now HTML files, and that is not PHP files. So what we need to do is we need to right click, go down to rename, and then we're going to change the extension from HTML to PHP. And this is usually the point where I lose a lot of people because, oh no, he's changing the files. They're no longer HTML files. What is going to happen? Is my website gonna burn down to the ground? It's very important to mention here that the only difference for you when you change your file from a HTML file into a PHP file is that you now also allow PHP to be written inside your HTML files. Everything is gonna work the exact same way as an HTML file except you can now also write PHP. I do also sometimes get asked questions about can I mix and match my HTML and PHP files inside this website here? And yeah, you can do that. Uh, so let's say I have another page like my contact page. Let's say there's no PHP code inside this page at all. Then you can of course have this one just be contact.html and you don't need to change it into contact.php. But if you need any sort of PHP code to work inside any of the other pages, then you need to do this. You need to go inside your HTML file and you need to rename it and make sure it says header.php. Then you need to go inside the contact page, rename it into contact.php. Without doing this, this is not going to work. So now because I did this, I can now go back inside my index page and now you can see, oh, the color changed. It is now registered as actually being PHP code. 
Now, of course, we do need to do one more thing here because right now we don't have a header.html file anymore. We do have a header.php file. So saving this and going back inside the website, you can now see that once I refresh it, you can now see that everything looks the exact same way as it did before. So now we have the website running, everything is perfectly fine, but our header is up here for some reason. And that is simply because we're linking to the header inside the top of the website here, which does also mean that I need to copy this code, go back inside my contact page, and at the very top here, instead of having this header, we're just gonna go ahead and delete it. So all the way down till here, and I'm gonna paste in this code instead, which means that now, if I were to go inside my contact page, so if I were to go inside my URL up here and say contact.php, you can now see that we're loading up the contact page, but we also still have the header up here. So everything is working perfectly fine. And the same thing you can do for the footer if you don't want to repeat that HTML every single time. So what I can do is I can go inside my root folder, create a new file, and I can call this one footer.php because again, now we're doing PHP files. So what I can do is I can go inside my index file and I can go down to the bottom, grab my footer, and copy everything all the way up to where it stops. So right here, save it, go back inside my footer.php and paste everything in, save it, go back inside my index file, and at the bottom here, we're just simply gonna copy paste the code from the top here as well, go down to the bottom, paste it in, and change our require ones to footer.php. And we can do the same thing when it comes to the contact page. So we can just go inside the contact page. Instead of having the footer here, we can just delete everything. And instead, we're just gonna link to the footer using a piece of PHP code. And then we're gonna save it. So doing that, we can actually go back to the front page. So we're just gonna do that. You can now see that even though go down to the bottom, we still have the footer because we're linking to it. And what this basically means is that now I can go inside my footer or inside my header simply by going inside my root folder, going inside my header.php, and then I can change one thing in here, and then I'm going to change all the headers inside all the pages inside the website. At this point here, any people who's only been learning HTML and CSS up until now may be a little bit confused about some of the things we've been doing. Um, all you need to know is that we installed a local server on our computer to simulate once we actually upload the website to the internet. So whenever you create a new website, it has to go inside our htdocs folder. So you basically just go in here, you create a new folder and you call it my new website or something. And then you just simply go inside this folder and you start creating your new website. And that is how you would get started on a new website inside this server here. Then all you need to do is go inside and actually make sure that you have these servers running anytime you want to start working on a website. Then you go inside the browser and inside the browser, you just simply go inside your local host and then you can just find your website here, click it, open it up, and then you can actually start seeing your website. And again, I just want to point out for the HTML and CSS people that what we just did in this video here is actually a pretty common thing that most web developers do when they create websites. Like we don't actually go inside our desktop and have our website sitting in there, at least not in most cases. Like we do actually have a local server on our computer and then we create a website inside the local server so we can actually use all PHP code and in some cases, some JavaScript code that does actually require that you have your website inside a server. Even if you were to try and do this where we link to the different pages using JavaScript instead of PHP, you would still need to go in and have this website on a server for this to actually work. So there is no workaround. Like you do need to have your website inside a server in order to get the solution working. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.